Welcome to the Visual Arc 1.9 uh, webinar. Uh, today I would like to introduce you to the new features of Visual Arc 1.9, but uh, also would like to do an introduction of, of Visual Arc for those who doesn't know it at all. Okay, so we'll have a, an overview of, of the, the main features of it. I uh, will have uh, Kike Garcia and Enrique Marquez from, from the Visual Arc development team who will help you uh, to um, solve any questions or doubts you may have uh, during the, the webinar. In any case, uh, we will leave some time at the end of, the, of this webinar to, to uh, uh, answer some questions you may have. So please use the, the raise hand button from the webinar panel to, uh, to, to, to require some uh, turn for, for asking questions uh, in loud voice. All right. Okay, so um, as you may know, Visual Arc uh, is a, a plugin for Rhino. Uh, it's aimed to uh, speed up the process of modeling architecture inside Rhino. And uh, it has this idea of uh, building information modeling, BIM. So from a 3D, 3D model, you can obtain all the 2D documentation, all the information of the, of the model we are, uh, you are working uh, on. Okay, Visual Arc is aimed to, to architects and engineers. Uh, Rhino users, of course, in the, the world of uh, architecture, anyone, uh, any professional of the architecture and construction, also interior architects or CG artists because you can quickly model a project with visual art and sign materials and get really uh, interesting renders, okay? And um, as I said, Visual Arts helps in the process of modeling architecture of any shape, any form. Okay, so a model like that, a project like that, um, can be done in Rhino and in Visual Arc, you can uh, use some tools to uh, get advantage of the, the, the process of, of modeling this, this kind of uh, architecture. So um, Visual Arc uses a set of architectural objects, they are all parametric. Okay, that means that we can change their, uh, their values and their shapes according to some parameters and uh, that makes it easier to work with, with uh, 3D architecture. So since these objects have some styles, have some parameters, we can uh, keep this information, we can list this information and we can change the, the, the we can edit these objects parametrically. Uh, again, the idea that from the 3D model you can obtain all the uh, documentation drawings, the floor plans, elevation, uh, scheduled data with the, the, the list of, uh, of the, the objects that are being used, okay, opening elevations and so forth. And everything is linked to the 3D model. Also, uh, Rhino itself provides all the necessary tools, drafting tools, to complete the uh, drawings for, for the for, uh, creating the documentation of any architectural project. Um, one thing I would like to, to point, to, to stress out uh, of the new version is this uh, option to uh, import and export uh, models uh, through this IFC file format, which is the standard format to exchange uh, BIM models between AEC uh, platforms. Okay, so in the 1.9 version, we have added the option to import uh, IFC files, and we have improved also the exporter, the IFC exporter, as we will see later on. Um, well, Visual Arc, as I said, is uh, aimed also for for uh, uh, render uh, specialists. Also, you can obtain really interesting uh, views of the the project sectioned. Okay, with some, some tools that Visual Art provides. And the, the assignment of, of materials uh, work as in Rhino, so Visual Art supports in Render Engine supported by Rhino. Uh, later on, we will see also some examples of the Visual Art Grasshopper components. As you know, is a plugin for, for Grasshopper that lets you create the Visual Art objects inside Grasshopper. Okay, so we'll see a, a few examples of it. How it works. Just a few development facts. Uh, we try to release new versions every four or six months. Uh, they are free of charge for, for the Visual Auto users and we base our development uh, on the user feedback. So please feel free to uh, share any thoughts, any suggestions, any uh, 
back reports with us because they are key to uh, to improve visual, keep on improving visual arc for the future for the future releases right there are also educational versions available uh, which work as uh, rhino educational licenses same policy so they are completely commercial uh, versions but at a reduced price and can be used for professional purposes all right and uh, well finally you can find any information related to visual art at the website there is a 30 trial day available but if you need more time to evaluate it just write me to visual uh, at suny.com or fsalia at suny.com to ask for an extension of the evaluation period all right Okay, now uh, I will show you uh, the new features on, on an existing project, okay? Uh, I would like to leave the, the time to, to, for questions or, 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 or doubts at the end of the, of the session, but if you have some very important uh, question you want to, to do in the middle, just raise your hand, okay? And I will, I will be glad to help you answering it. Or just use the chat and Kike or Enrique will, will help you for these doubts, right? Um, okay, so first of all, well, this is an existing model uh, created with previous version of Visual Arc. Uh, it has a combination of Visual Arc objects and Rhino geometry. For example, this is looks like a roof, but it's actually a, a closed polish surface, okay? But we have uh, slabs, we have uh, windows, we have walls in it, okay? So we have a mixture of Rhino and Visual Arc geometry. Uh, this is a very important fact because when you work in, in, inside Rhino, uh, you can combine any geometry. So Rhino geometry with visual art objects, okay? At the end, everything will be displayed in the 2D drawings, in the section views, plan views, right? So it doesn't matter, it doesn't really matter if you want to work specifically with visual art objects or with Rhino geometry as well, since everything will, will work, will combine uh, well together. So I want to start uh, talking about the new way to insert doors and windows that this 1.9 version has. So when we create um, a, a wall, let's create a wall here, for example, and insert a window or a door in it. Um, now, they don't necessarily need to be uh, created inside walls. So now the doors can be actually uh, placed anywhere like floating in the, in, the, in the model. But as soon as they detect some wall, they uh, automatically attach to it. So in this case, I just need to do one click to insert the door and another click to uh, decide the opening, uh, opening site. But if I uh, insert this door like uh, outside of a, of a door, of a wall, then there is an additional click to define the door orientation. Okay, so, and finally, the last click to uh, decide the opening site. And this door remains through, like floating in the, in, the, in the model as soon as it doesn't detect uh, a wall uh, in the nearby. So, when this door goes on the wall path, it automatically detects uh, its position and uh, gets attached to it. But when we move it outside of, let's just disable the gumball, when, when I uh, move it outside of the wall, the door uh, gets attached to, to it. Okay, the door gets attached to it. And the same happens if we create a wall from uh, a curve. It's exactly the same. So remember that we have here some tools to create walls from curves, but in this case I'm going to use the, the, the right click for the wall set path command, so I'm going to tell this wall to get this uh, this path curve, okay? Now, when this door detects the wall position, it automatically creates the hole in, in it. Um, but if I delete this wall, all the doors that were inserted in, this, in that wall uh, are deleted too. So for example, in this case, uh, well, having mm, like doors and windows floating in the model makes sense, especially when you want to place doors inside uh, columns, so, so they don't need to be uh, uh, inside the wall necessarily. But in this case, uh, when I created this model, 
uh, this, this, this feature was unavailable. So I had to create here a wall in order to insert these, these doors and windows. So what we are going to do now is to remove the uh, wall that uh, I created here before. But first, let's display them. the level one. So here it is the wall. Okay. I will move it outside. I cannot delete uh, the wall because I would also delete all the uh, the windows that are inside. And now I will select everything. I will just move these uh, windows back to its position without the, um, the wall. Here we go. Okay, now I can just delete the wall that I don't need it anymore. Okay, uh, one important thing about um, the way of editing doors and windows we have added that also is very helpful for, for columns and beams is the way to, is the, the option to change the uh, predefined size of any existing margins. For example, if we have a column, let's place the column here. This column style has uh, by default a list of uh, predefined sizes. So we select the column from the properties panel. We see that this profile there is a well in this case there is just a there is just a, a existing uh, size, but for any other profile, for example this IPN, uh, we see that here from the pro profile list there are different pro uh, uh, predefined sizes. This is new in the 1.9 version, so now we can easily change the one of these predefined profiles from here automatically. If we want to define uh, different uh, profile dimensions, we have to choose other. And here we have the different parameters of this uh, this profile, right? And this works for the uh, for the doors, for the windows, and uh, beams and columns uh, object, All right? And now that we're talking about uh, about uh, columns, uh, I will show you a new feature also. Uh, about columns, which is the option to assign uh, a 3D block and a 2D block for the 3D and 2D represent, representation of, of, um, of columns. Because as you see here, this window uses already a 3D block for its representation. Uh, Visual Art uses this, this, uh, this uh, solution to, uh, well, to achieve all the designs that are not possible to be done with existing parameters that the, uh, the styles provide. So in this case, I created a block any, with any detail I wanted uh, using Rhino, Rhino tools. Um, I assigned that block to a, a, a window style. And I can do the same now for, uh, for columns. So first of all, I will create my block. So I will use this column. OK. Uh, first of all, I will just explode it, so it will become a closed extrusion. I will put the construction plane here on the level one, and I will just create a, some geometry here to add to that volume. Okay, so we'll just uh, do a Boolean operation. All right, now I have a single object and I will create a block out of it. So I need to define the base point. It is very important that you pick the, the middle base point. Okay, so let's put this in wireframe. And pick exactly the, the bottom point and let's call this uh, column 3D. Okay. 
OK. Back to shaded. Right. Now I will open the column styles. Here I have the list of all the existing column styles. I could duplicate just the existing one and edit it, but I will use the, the wizard to create a new, new column style. So I will call this style column from block. I click next. All these steps really doesn't matter since I will define the, the 3D geometry of this block of this column from a block. So you can just uh, skip these steps. And finally, when I am asked to uh, assign a 3D block, I will use this option to assign uh, the block we created now to this uh, column style. Here I have the list of all the blocks that I have uh, used in this model, but I will choose the one I have created now. I have also the option to assign a 2D block for the 2D representation of the, of the, of the column. If I don't use any, the, the 2D representation will be the real section of the, of, the, of the block. Okay, so this is what I'm going to use in this case. I click Next, and here we go. Click Finish, and finally click OK to accept changes. So now we can select all these columns I created here. and I will change their style by the one we have just created now. Column from block. Here we go. Okay. All right. So now we'll have a look at the curtain wall object which was a new feature of the 1.8 version, but it has also, uh, um, we have also introduced some uh, improvements in this new 1.9 version. So I'm going to delete this wall here. Okay, so we'll create a curtain wall on this, uh, on this facade. So when you run the curtain wall, actually in this document I have just uh, one style. Here I can define the head, but let's put the construction plane on the floor zero. And draw the curtain wall like here. Okay. Right. Now I can change the, the head, as you know, using the control points of the curtain wall. And I can also um, well, one of the, 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 the most important new features of, of the light regarding curtain walls is the option to insert doors and windows inside it. So I can uh, now run the door, co door command and I can choose now that the, the, the curtain wall is also detected as an object where I can insert doors and windows. Okay, as you can see here. Now what I will do is to open the, the curtain wall styles and I will create a new style since I want to uh, define a new division for this, uh, for this curtain wall. So I will choose fixed number of cells of um, 2 by 8 for example and I will change this style by the one I have just created. Okay. All right. Um, one important thing we have added also is the option to lean curtain walls. So if we activate the control points, that is, let's put this in, in wireframe displayed mode. Well, maybe better the hidden. Okay, there is this cont uh, control point at the top of the, of the curtain wall object. If I activate the gumball, I can move it, and this allows us to uh, lean the curtain, curtain walls. Okay. Unfortunately, the openings doesn't lean, but uh, in some cases it can be useful to have curtain walls lean it like, like that. Okay. Which was not possible before. Okay. 
So I'm going to delete now this curve wall. I will create a new one from a curve. So I will show you. Let's draw this curve from the from the level zero. Just doing double click on the floor zero. Okay, so I'm going to create a curve to define the curtain wall path because now you can create curtain walls from uh, with curved panels. So when you run the curtain wall command, we can select this new style we created, and here in the command line we can select the from curves option to create them from uh, from curves. Okay, so here it is. But as you can see. The, the curtain, the, the panels are flat. Okay, they follow the, the path, but they are flat. Actually, let's change again. The height of this curtain wall. Okay, here we go. Not render it, shave it. Okay, so In the curtain wall styles, there is, there is the option to define the panels as flat or as curved. So we can choose this option here, and the flats, the, the, the panels will adapt to the shape of the original curve. Okay? And again, if we insert doors or windows here, actually we could insert here the one of the former doors we had in this. In this document, okay, we can um, well we can have curved uh, curtain walls from curved uh, curves. Okay, now let's talk about uh, some improvements in the documentation tools, especially uh, regarding the uh, plan view command. So when you create a plan view. You select style, you select the plan view you want to create. So let's choose, for example, the, the level 2. You define from a rectangle the area of the, of the object you want to, of the geometry you want to display in the plan view. Finally, an insert point. Remember that you can define also this, this boundary area from a, a custom curve if you draw it previously. Okay. And the plan view will show everything from the level 2 cut plane uh, uh, downwards, okay, with an unlimited depth. So if we select the plan view from the properties panel, we select the plan view object, and we see that we have added this view depth option, which lets you um, show, choose the, uh, the depth of the object. Uh, you want to display in the in the plan view. So now it's set to unlimited. That means it shows everything. But now you can tell this to show only the geometry uh, located at the uh, this level. Okay, from its elevation to uh, the head where there is this uh, its uh, cut plane. Okay, or you can show you can include also the the level below. Okay, here between brackets it tells you the, 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 the depth uh, of, um, of view that will, uh, will include in the object that will be displayed in the, in the plan view. So I choose now this level only. So in the plan view we will only have that geometry included in the, in the level 2. Okay, from its elevation uh, to the, the cut plane uh, level. Okay, so now uh, let's talk about the IFC, um, IFC improvements, okay, the improvements uh, related to, to IFC file format. Um, in the previous version, Visual Art could only export to IFC. Now, in this 1.1 uh, version, Visual Art can also, can also import. But in terms of exporting, we have added uh, a very important feature, which is the option to assign 
uh, IFC information to any kind of geometry. So when we export this model to IFC, all the visual art walls, windows, uh, roofs, etc., will be exported as such. Okay, doors as doors, walls as walls. But what happens with with Rana geometry? For example, this um, actually this block, right? Or with uh, this object. Well, this is a slab, but for example, this object is actually a closed polar surface. Now I have the option to uh, tell the geometry to be exported as a specific uh, IFC element. So when I select it, uh, there is this IFC tag icon here that lets, uh, lets you choose any IFC type from this list. Okay. So in this case I'm going to choose the IFC stair. If, uh, if you don't select any of these, uh, of these objects, it gets the, uh, well, it will be exported, this geometry, as a, as a proxy by default, okay? So the different uh, output software reads these proxies as different geometry, like generic models, in case of Revit, right? But um, I have the option here to tell this object to be specifically some uh, specific uh, object from this IFC uh, list, okay? It can also assign some names, some description, or even a, a tag. Right, or for example, I had this um, polisher face that started to be a roof actually, but I had to explore it in order to, to trim this the shape from here. But now I will tell this geometry to be uh, to be exported as a roof. Okay, great. So now to export this model, simply uh, go to file save as and we choose the IFC file which is actually selected already selected we have here this button the options to uh, well to assign these IFC categories by layer okay actually let me just go uh, backward uh, we have also the uh, this option from here if you wanted to to, to define these settings before uh, saving the, the model as. So here we have the IFC export options. So you can uh, assign to different layer a specific uh, IFC category, right? So we can choose any of these uh, uh, IFC types from this list. Or we can tell uh, some the objects inside some specific layer to do not be exported just and checking this checkbox next to the to the layer name. Okay. Okay. So um, I go to file, save as, and I'm going to save this model. Okay. We'll replace an existing model I had, and finally here from the command line I will get the confirmation that the model has been exported successfully. Okay, here we go. I will open Revit and I will open this IFC file I have created from here. Okay, so here it is. Okay, now Revit uh, opens the file. Well, uh, it doesn't. I will um, open a new document, and I will talk about the, the Visual Art Grasshopper components. Okay, so I will open Grasshopper, first of all. And, uh, well, as you know, the Visual Art Grasshopper components lets you uh, create the visual art object inside Grasshopper. So here under this visual art tab, we have all the visual art objects. For example, if we want to create a wall, we just need to place this wall component here, which basically creates a wall from uh, a default uh, curve, but we can choose any other curve as the input for this wall. So we set one curve and plug it here in this wall. Okay, if we want to add more options, 
we need to, for example, to change the wall head or the wall uh, style. We have this uh, wall component, wall options component that lets us define more options. These parameters we have here are basically the same parameters as we have for each uh, wall object in the model. So we can insert a value for the height. Okay, so we can change the, the height. And we can create, for example, a, a new style for this for this wall. We could actually uh, take one of the existing styles from this uh, object style param. So here I have the wall style. Uh, this doing right click lets us set one existing wall style from the from the document. So here I have the, all the existing styles in the document, and I can plug it in here now. All right, but I can also create uh, styles from from Grasshopper. So I have here the wall style component that I will plug it in here, and it requires some information like the amount of components that this this wall style has. So in this case, there is a wall layer missing, so I will use this wall layer component to plug it in here, and I can define all the parameters of this wall layer according to this uh, to this input. So basically, the most important is the thickness. So I can change this thickness, and if I want to add more components, I just need to duplicate this component and add it here to the list of components. Okay, so now I have created a wall style that has two components with these thicknesses. Okay, now if I want to insert a door or a window, the process is the same. Uh, since in this 1.9 version, the wall, uh, the doors and windows doesn't need to don't need to 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 be inserted inside walls. Actually, I actually just need a, a, an insertion point. Okay, so the window is already created, but if I want this to be uh, inside the wall, I just need to put it closer to the wall, or uh, make sure to make sure that they will be connected. Okay, I can just plug this wall component to the uh, to the window wall input. Okay, remember that we can define more options to this, this window style, to this window object. Excuse me just placing this uh, window options component. Okay, so I can define more uh, details for, for, the, for the window object, for example, the profile. So I can plug it this here and define the values, the value of this, um, of this profile dimensions from here. Let's put some values that make sense. Okay, so I can change here the dimensions of this of this window profile from here. But I can also um, create a window from any profile. Remember that uh, to do so, we need to well first reference this curve from a curve param, and now I need this. Uh, custom profile component to translate this curve into a valid profile for this window. So we plug this here and instead of this rectangular profile we will plug this custom profile. And we can get a window with, with any shape. Okay. Before continuing with Grasshopper let's have a look at the at Revit since like it has opened the, the, the model and let's see how it, it reads it. Okay. So let's see the model in 3D. So here it is. And if we have a look at the different objects, for example, this, uh, this wall. We can see that Revit detects uh, this, this wall as a native wall. Okay, so we can change the style, we can change the, the in this case, the family, uh, type, etc. All right, same for slabs, uh, for windows, Right uh, and for any geometry, but in case of those geometry that were Rhino objects, for example, this stair, 
Now rabbit recognizes it, recognizes it as a stair. Of course, it's not like a rabbit stair, but at least is a, a, an object that rabbit identifies as a stair and can be listed in, in schedule tables. Okay, same as this object that we tagged as a roof. It was a, a polish surface, and uh, now rabbit reads it as a as a roof. Okay, if we uh, select now this this object, since it was exported as a proxy, Revit reads it as a generic, a generic model. Okay. Right. So I will talk now about the IFC import. So we're going to import an IFC file to see how Visual Arc uh, recognizes the geometry from a, a IFC model. Um, so we'll go to file. Actually, we'll open a new a new Rhino session because if there is questions related to this model, I will I will keep it. So I go to open. I will choose the IFC file format. Well, first, let's load Visual Arc. Now we go to Open, and we will select, for example, this um, this mother house, which is IFC file. Okay, this is a a model from from Revit. Okay, created in Revit, and if we select the different objects, uh, we see that they are recognized as, as visual art objects as well. So this is recognized as a wall that we can further edit here. Okay, for by any other any style, and we have all the information of these objects in in here, same as this door. In some cases, for example, these uh, in cases of curtain walls, railings, or stairs, since Revit has different way to create them, they create them as assembly of, of different objects. Uh, Visual Arc just opens it as, as uh, blocks with the with the IFC information uh, attached. Okay, so we can see this is a uh, a railing from the IFC information. It is not uh, same as as railing that we had created using this tool, but at least it's an object that we can identify as, as, as railing. Okay. Same for these curtain walls, for example, okay. some other railings here, and so forth. But uh, all the other information related to levels, for example, is, is here, so we can uh, keep on working with levels, as if we had created this model with, with Visual Arc. Okay. In case of uh, windows and doors, uh, since Revit has a different way to create them, um, Visual Arc identifies this as a, as a native uh, Visual Arc window. But if we have a look at the style of this window, so we select it and do right click on the style properties button, we can see that this window uh, has is created from using a block, a block definition for the for the 3D representation of it. Okay, and this is the way Visual Arc has to, uh, to cope with uh, these objects from IFC uh, files, right? But we can change their style. We can we can uh, work with, uh, with them as if they were created inside Visual Arc directly. Okay, so let's buy, let's get back to to Grasshopper. I wanted to show you some new features. Uh, for example, we were working with um, with the slabs before. We have added the option to um, to in Visual R 1.9 to create the slabs with different with different layers. So if we go back to this model, we can see this feature from here. We have this uh, slab, for example. Uh, in the previous version, you could 
ch change the thickness of the slab from here, but now since you can create also styles of slabs, you can change the thickness uh, of, uh, of the slabs by style or by object. So first of all, we will create a new style, a new slab style from here. I do right click and I open this uh, style dialog for slabs. So it will just create a new style and here I can create new layers from here. Okay, so I can choose each one of this layer from the geometry tab assign a different a different thickness okay and uh, also define different uh, attributes for each one so I will change for example the display color of this of this window of this slab layer from here say okay and now I will change this slab for the one we have created okay and I have now a slab with two layers that I can um, as I said I can change its thickness uh, individually by, by slab layer so I can change I can select each one of the layers that this uh, this style has so choose number one or number two and define any any thickness, for example, 1.5, so you get a very thick uh, layer, or define it by a style, okay? And we can do the same in Grasshopper. So when I create a slab from a, from a curve, uh, in this case, I will just draw a rectangle, I will reference this rectangle from this curve, plug it in here as the boundary for my, my uh, slab, and uh, I can place now um, a slab uh, options component to add more options to this, to this slab. I have the option to assign a thickness by object, okay, as you can see here. Or I have the option to also create styles from Grasshopper with this uh, slab uh, style component. Again, I have to plug this in here. There is some information missing, which is the slab layer, the slab layers. So I, I plug this slab layer component here, and now I can define the thickness of this slab layer. To, to make this uh, work, uh, I need to remove the, the, the thickness by object, so it will take the uh, thickness by, by layer now. Okay, if I want to create a slab style with more components, it is exactly the same as we did for the walls. I need to uh, add a new wall uh, slab layer to this, uh, to this style. Okay, and now, um, well, let's make this thinner. Imagine that we want to uh, create a grid of um, an array of beams to hold this slab, right? So I'm going to create very quickly a, a simple definition that uh, will, well, from the from this rectangle, I will explode it. So I will get the um, the this segment of the slab and this other one. Okay, so I'll get this segment from a list. Let's insert here an inter number to define then zero, zero item. Okay. And in this case, the number two item. So I have now this uh, curve selected and this other one all right actually we'll just the uh, the one and the three instead because I want to take the uh, the longer the longer lines okay okay now I just uh, add I just create um, a line 
and uh, I need to divide this curve into different points. So I have this curve divided into different points. Again, the same with this one. And I will just use these points to connect to create different lines. Okay, if this happens, then I need to reverse the order of one of the, the two line uh, division points. Okay, I can add here a slider to to define the number of, of divisions. Okay, so we'll have the same. Okay, and now I'll, I will use these curves as the, the path curves for the beams I want to create here. So I run I put the, the beam component and I'll take this uh, this curve as the uh, input curve for the for the beams. Uh, again, if I want to define more options for this beam, I have to add a beam component beam options component. Here I can define a style. So in this case I'm going to choose one of the beam styles I have in the model. So I set one beam style. Let's choose uh, the HB one for example. Connect it here, and I'm going to choose the alignment, the top middle alignment, right? I also I will also change the alignment of the slab. Okay, so we'll change the alignment to to the bottom. So in order that to have this, the beams uh, beneath the, the slab. Okay, and. Um, one option we have added in this in this beam uh, uh, component as well as the other object component is the the option to to obtain the list of predefined sizes of uh, of the each style. So in this case, I need to go to to the beam the construct uh, style component. So I will obtain from this beam style all the list of sizes. If I launch here a panel, I can see them displayed here. Okay, so I have uh, a list of 31 predefined sizes for this uh, HP style. And now I can, well, I can just uh, take one of this list, one item from this list. Okay, so he, I have here the list of uh, styles. I will set here an uh, integer number that will go from um, from 0 to 31, which is the number, the amount of predefined sizes I have for this style, and this will be the index uh, the index I take from this list. So now, uh, in the profile list, I could actually create this profile from one of these profile components. Okay. That Let's me change, well, define each one of the values of this profile, but instead of that, I will choose one of these predefined profiles, okay? So now I can, uh, I know that I'm using, I'm creating a beam with this style, and I will use the uh, profile item number six, okay? But I can choose this from here very easily. Okay. And just to just to finish very quickly, I will show one existing one other existing project, which is very simple as well, but just a way to uh, show you how to combine visual objects and define uh, interesting definitions. Okay, so this is very simple definition to that creates a grid of columns and slabs. Okay, so just by changing these parameters, I can define the, uh, the different uh, values of this uh, domino structure. Okay, and uh, finally, when I bake this uh, this object, when I bake this the geometry, all the uh, objects become workable objects in Visual Arc, right? That I can further edit them. I can create. Uh, to the drawings, sections, plan views, etc. I can export to IFC. Uh, I can uh, keep on working as if I had created them from from Visual Arc. All right, this is pretty pretty much uh, the most important uh, of the 1.9 version. 
So I would like you to, if you have some specific question, to, to use the raise hand button, and I will be glad to, to answer your, your help, to answer your, your questions. So, okay, I see, I see some of you are, ha are raising your hand, so we'll start with uh, Peter. Okay, so... Okay. Peter, you're on. You can ask me whatever you, you want. Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. I hope you hear me. Yes, we hear you. At least okay. I, I do. <laughs> uh, okay. I have uh, one question about the uh, cut and wall. Mm -hmm. And this uh, cut and wall uh, always has a rectangular shape. So uh, is it possible to extend cut and wall uh, the similar way as uh, as a classical wall. Okay. Well, this is not possible now, but it's it is actually in the wish list. So I hope that in future versions uh, they will work in the same way as as walls. So you will be able to extend them uh, up and down uh, to uh, to adapt to any shape. But right now this is not possible. Okay. okay. Also, in future versions, we well actually in the in the next version 2.0. Uh, you will be able to uh, to do Boolean operations between visual objects and, so and and Rhino solids. Now, this option is only available for walls, but um, uh, in the next version, it will be also available for uh, for the other objects. So that will be another way to uh, trim, uh, you know, curtain walls or, or uh, define the, the 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 shape of curtain walls just doing these these operations. Okay, so let's uh, give the turn to Jürgen Kyle. Jürgen, you're, you're on. Uh, hello, Francis. Hi, Jürgen. Hi. Yes, I hear you. Thank you. Uh, first of all, thanks for your presentation, very impressive. You're and, welcome. Uh, I have a question uh, according uh, or regarding the documentation, what you have shown, uh, the depth of plan views. Yes, and, okay. Uh, my question is, um, uh, is it also possible to give individual depths for uh, the depths below and above the, the section or the cut plane? Um, for the section, uh, well, the depth is defined by the section area. So, for example, here I have uh, already different section lines. Um, if we select the control points of these section lines, you can see that there is a, a, an area. Okay, this is what defines the depth of the uh, of the of the section of the section uh, line. Okay, when you create a section line, okay, very quickly, uh, we define two points, and now we define a viewer position, but also a depth. Okay, so if I put this depth here. Uh, finally, I give some text. Uh, when we select the control points, we can see this depth from here, and we can act actually change it, uh, selecting the control points and moving them. Okay. Oh, okay. It is not limited only to uh, to the two D uh, plane. Only uh, there is also a depth already in the cut plane. Uh, well, only in case of sections. I mean. In case of uh, of uh, plan views, this depth is uh, defined by the um, by the level limits, which are basically the the elevation of of them, and or the elevation of the next of the next uh, level. Yes. Okay, but in case of that, section, that was actually, my question uh, for a plan view to have an individual depth instead of right. only saying you can see the uh, the story above or the story below that you can say okay here is the cut plane and I want to see one meter fifty or two meter something like that okay so you wish to define exactly the 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 the, the depth for each uh, plan view isn't it yes because okay. then it is uh, somewhat easier for instance to have uh, how to handle the doors and the windows to see them or not to see them 
this is a feature uh, what also Revit um, is uh, is having. So um, therefore, I I thought uh, maybe that is also something on the wish list. Okay. Well, actually, it wasn't, but we we will add it immediately. So I hope we can work on that. Actually, I envision this option like putting here some custom uh, build that value. So yeah. I think this this uh, I think that will be possible for sure. So we, we yeah. will take this request for for the next for the next uh, for future versions. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So. Let's see if anyone else writes the hand. Okay, no one, no one else. Right. So, uh, thank you very much, everybody, for uh, attending this this webinar. Uh, just as a, as a reminder, here you have my my email. Okay, and please uh, please feel free to to write me for any f uh, future questions, suggestions, or requests. All right, I will be very glad to, to help you. Thank you, everybody, and see you next time.